Okay, we've tried it. The AOA works. There's no visual evidence of any appendages, any changes to the airframe, so forth and so on. So it's all electronic magic. How did you pull this off? Well, actually, we use Chira, which is the Italian Space Agency. They developed the software program for us, and we our software team integrated into our PFD display. So PhD rocket science actually made this happen. They did a really great job. The calibration process, pretty simple. You ask an authorized dealer, you go there. He has a little card. He puts that card in the tube, enters five parameters, the basic empty weight of the aircraft, the max gross weight of the aircraft, the calibration weight of the aircraft. That means when you're going to go fly to calibrate what the aircraft's going to be, enter your maneuvering speed and your short field landing or your slowest approach speed. He resets the PFD and you're ready to go do your calibration flight. Once you're up in the area, it takes uh, three test points, a 45 second test point at VA, a two and a half minute point at uh, typically around VS times 1.3. That's about two and a half minutes. And your last test point is your short field approach speed and the, the landing configuration. And that's about 45 seconds. So under five minutes up in the altitude, you're gonna be done. Let's talk about the visual ergonomics, the symbology that you've used. I would imagine you went through a number of iterations before you finally decided on this, and at the same time, as I understand it, it may still change prior to uh, its debut in the hands of the aviation public. Oh, definitely. We initially started off with the basic Navy-style indexer with the donut and the chevrons. I really like that. We also had a gauge as well. But we found, unlike the other systems that just calibrate in the clean configuration, and they say that the dirty configuration is good enough, we couldn't do that. So we had to either do a push button where the guy would select flaps up or flaps down. And we thought that would be too confusing. In the extremis, a pilot would forget which button was pressed, whether it's in flaps up or flaps down configuration. So then we moved to the dual indicator. Mm -hmm. And so right now, as you saw, the, the flaps upside is on the left side of the meter and the flaps down is on the right side. I think by the time we get to certification, both those needles will be on the same side. It's a little bit cleaner looking style. And plus, when you're in the intermediate flap position, so you're 50% flap, you can easily interpolate between the two needles where you're at. Other than that, the software is working as you've seen. The software we really think is good to go. We just got to refine the display. Well, the interesting thing is that in the various modes that are available, whether it's you know half screen or the teeny little inset on the PFD, all of it's very visually accessible. All of it's fairly intuitive. And the nice part is, as we were running a number of patterns, it was very easy to assume what it should be showing you via what you knew to be flying. So the intuitive nature of it was just dead nuts on. Exactly. Like we talked about in flying, the big thing we want to make sure our customers know is they need to fly their book airspeeds. This is not uh, a military AOA type approach to a carrier. This is an AOA that helps you uh, provide supplement information while you're flying the book airspeeds for the aircraft. You can see that the displays on the MFD, you can have it on the split screen, top or bottom, or the thumbnail, any one of the pages. And then, of course, like you mentioned, the auto mode. I really like the auto mode on the PFD because you don't need it AOA all the time. So when you're at a cruise speed and you don't need it, it goes away. As soon as you start slowing down, it automatically pops up for you right at the parameter right before you need it. Well, James is both a military and a civilian pilot and for somebody who's worked in the instructor role. Let's get to the most serious question involved here. For somebody who's looking at this and saying, yeah, I want this because everybody tells me this is going to make me a safer, better pilot. And in the long run, it can. What advice do you give to them to, uh, one, oversee the installation, and two, learn to fly properly with this kind of information? I've yet to see anything that so smoothly integrates AOA information into current flying technology. This is just really sweet. Well, the first thing on the installation, the pilot should be involved in the installation. Obviously, it has to be, it has to be installed and signed off by a mechanic. But the pilot should be there when the, when the parameters are being loaded and during the calibration flight. The pilot definitely wants to be there during that calibration flight to make sure it's done accurately. AOA is not something, just like flying an ILS approach, it's not something you can just go out and understand and do on your own. You really need to get to find a CFI that's got some AOA experience, figure out how that thing works. Once you've got some couple instructional flights underneath your belt, I think they'll find it very intuitive. The biggest thing we hope for is to save people during that approach turn. Because as you saw, when you're sitting at your approach speed and you wrap the angle of bank to turn base, the stall speed increases and that needle goes right up in the yellow telling you, hey, you need to reduce your angle of attack, add some power, and uh, safely fly this aircraft, get back down to the green. James, a pleasure flying with you and I thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Aero TV is brought to you by Explore no limits flying in the newly FAA certified Sea Ray Elite Amphibious LSA. Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray Elite with a Rotax 914 turbocharged engine is equally at home on the ground, in the air, or on the water. Check it out at www.searay.com. 
now certified Aspen Avionic single band ADS-B, ATX100 and ATX100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com.